Bonjour, Véronique Véro, French girl in Seattle, reporting from a lovely corner of Paris, a little bit out of the way maybe, a section of the 17th arrondissement known as Les Batignolles neighborhood, and I am standing inside a very pretty little garden there, Le Square des Batignolles. Now you can tell the sign in front of me tells us not to step on the grass, but you know, we've just come out of confinement and all bets are off. Most of the public parks uh, and gardens in Paris are looking fairly neglected right now. You can see everything is overgrown. So each man for himself, the gardeners will be busy planting that area soon. All bets are off. I thought I'd take you on a little stroll through this uh, lovely garden which was created in the 19th century during the Second Empire by Napoleon III and his team. Alphand, A-L-P-H-A-N-D, is the gentleman who designed about 20 parks in Paris, including this one. Napoleon III lived in exile in um, in England for a long time. He loved London and he loved English style parks. So when he could uh, start working on Paris, he had several parks created and designed in the English style. The very romantic parks with a grotto, a waterfall, a river. This is what the English style was like you compare with gardens like Versailles where everything is orderly and under control it's pretty different now of course it looks even less controlled because everything is so overgrown this is probably the shabbiest I've ever seen the Square des Batignolles look at the weeds everywhere there will be a lot of work for those gardeners but it's still charming it still sits in the middle of a very bustling neighborhood trains going by, very close by. Les Batignolles is one of those villages that used to stand outside Paris until Napoleon III annexed a lot of them all around Paris in 1860 so he could create the new arrondissement that we know today. And so Les Batignolles, this neighborhood was split in half really, and this section was incorporated into the 17th arrondissement. You have beautiful trees. There is a gazebo and a, oh, a pretty little merry-go-round over there, but I won't get close because the trains are too loud. But at the time, they were quite proud of the trees they planted here and some of the exotic plants they planted here. It is one of these lovely parks in Paris, a little bit like Le Parc Monceau. That's not too far from here. In fact, Monceau and Les Batignolles were in the same neighborhood once. Now the neighborhood still feels like a village. At the same time, it's changed a lot. You can see many, many young families. Very few people can afford the real estate here. It's become quite desirable. There's another park nearby, much, much newer than this one, the Martin Luther King Park. I will take my patrons there a little bit later. In case you don't know me, I am a longtime travel blogger, a tour guide, and I am Paris-based. A child just fell and her mom rushed to her side. Ah, bicycles. <laughs> So, 
You can follow me on social media on Facebook, Instagram under French Girl in Seattle. It is also the name of my blog. I live stream on a regular basis, especially for my patrons, the people who support me through a great community called Patreon, patreon.com slash French Girl in Seattle. The ducks are popular in uh, Les Batignolles. I'll take you around the block so you can get a feel for the village, village-like atmosphere in Les Batignolles. It's kind of a mix of restaurants and cafes. A lot of them very trendy now. Gentrification has definitely happened, like in many Paris neighborhoods. In the evening, you can see a very young crowd sitting outside. When the young families went home, I would normally take another exit, but it's closed today, so we will use this one. Why not? I am a French native originally from Toulouse, but I lived in Seattle for 20 years and relocated to Paris in, in 2019, which is why my blog is still called French Girl in Seattle. You could call it French Girl in Seattle back in Paris. I share information about Paris and France every day on Facebook, on Instagram. I regularly uh, film guided walks around Paris and beyond Paris as well. I love to tell stories that are not told very often, especially in English, in social media, about French culture. Ooh. See this car over there? You know, deux chevaux, Citroën 2CV. This is a cool looking one. A two-tone deux chevaux, but not in the usual colors. It's my favorite car in the world. If you want to know more about it, I once wrote a story about la deux chevaux on the French girl in Seattle blog. I think I'll go this way. Because it still feels like a village, Les Batignolles, we have the village square. And the village square has a church. A church built in the 19th century. We came out of uh, the Paris lockdown about three weeks ago, very progressively. At this point, restaurants and cafes can only have customers outside. A ah, little bit of wind. Hope the microphone is not picking it up too much. There are so many places like these, like Les Batignolles around Paris former villages that were incorporated into the big city, whether they wanted to or not, in the second half of the 19th century. They are typically the places where I like to spend my time in Paris. I love the stories they tell. If I step back, you'll be able to see the church, the colorful church. But here's the little square I was telling you about lined with uh, cafes and restaurants that are quite busy already and it's only late afternoon and here is the local church Église Sainte Marie des Batignolles it's very pretty inside so definitely check out Les Batignolles when you come to Paris if you haven't already You will love the vibes here, very relaxed vibes, 
Every village square should have a bench, those pretty lights. And of course, a cafe terrace or two where regulars can meet. As always, to get more information about this uh, guided walk, look up the video notes once I publish the video on uh, YouTube. That's where I share all the information. That's where also where I, sh where I share the links so you can find me and follow some of my projects. When you come back to Paris, look me up. I love taking people to corners of Paris where the big crowds don't usually go. At least tourists. We do have local crowds here today. This is a Wallace Fountain. You recognize it, of course. They've been in Paris since the 1870s. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this walk today with me. My name is Véro, Véronique Véro, French girl in Seattle. À bientôt!